let's do another video. Um, first, I want to go back in time and save the tape uh, to go over the how high can the market go uh, video that was done back on June 1st. And based on the information then, which we expect is $7 trillion uh, to be pumped into the economy, uh, I said it can go up another 20%. Uh, and that was somewhere uh, around the neighborhood of 11.5, okay, on the uh, NASDAQ. And since then, we're all the way up now to 12.3, okay. But again,
on in the video I also talked about the earnings yield right it was 4.56 at the time um, that we will see it further decline okay and then that would be um, uh, uh, predicated that the interest rates would remain low and they have right the 10 years about 0.7 or whatever it is so so long as uh, 0 0.7 is less than whatever the earnings yield is at the time then naturally um, there will be a tendency for stocks to rise and that again is the problem with QE right that you are artificially suppressing the uh, yields on bonds uh, and savers and investments and you're making um, stock yields more attractive so you're influencing the stock market via uh, uh, QE uh, via bond buying uh, sure enough, since then, we are now down to 3.27% on the earnings yield, okay? Okay, so the next thing I said in this video, and this is September, was I was taking a look at the TSA traffic um, going uh, relative to last year, okay? The ongoing uh, traffic was way, and still is, way below what it was last year, okay? Um, do you think that has changed at all? Well, let's take a look let's take a look and this is uh, October um, look at it it's flattening out right little pop here coming right back down this is as of October actually November 10th uh, just a couple weeks ago where's the improvement right it's not there it's not there but wait you told me that the market went up because it's a forward-looking indicator that things are going to improve it's a v-shaped recovery we're going back to normal and you know what's the problem okay well if that was true then why aren't uh traffic flow throughs increasing here's the latest and this is uh the 18th okay uh november 18th 700 600 800 900 600 way 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 below that two to 2.5 million travelers per day well nick you know you they just announced the uh the vaccine it's not going to go up uh, immediately fair enough fair enough so why was the market up if you're waiting for a vaccine because between now and april and the end of next year when we're going to get vaccinated god knows how many people are going to get vaccinated with Trump bots running around thinking that it's, uh, you know, uh, Bill Gates chipping them or some shit like that, as if they couldn't be tracked with their iPhones or s smartphones, right? But whatever. How many of them are going to get um, vaccinated? It's unknown. It's unknown. Okay? We don't know that as of now. There's still a lot we don't know. But you're telling me it's a forward-looking indicator. Well, what about hotel occupancy? Well, it's going down. It's going down. Well, yeah, you know, it's seasonally. Well, yeah, okay, fair enough. It's seasonally. But look where we're going down from. 
right? A much, much lower level. If anything, we should continue on on a sideways move to kind of catch up to the seasonally weak period, not go down with it. Well, the vaccine is still not here. Well, the, isn't the market an all-knowing, powerful thing, right? It's crystal ball, knows everything. That's what you say, right? What, it didn't know that we're going to be on fire uh, in terms of COVID cases uh, across the United States? Was it a secret? What, sudden, suddenly Trump is going to start caring? So why is the market at all-time highs? Because of the fundamentals? Because the market is a forward-looking indicator? Why is it that when QE ended, or flattened out, I should say, right? It's flat here, slightly rising. So so did the market. We were in MMT everything mode, right? It's not repos why markets are going up. It's not deficits why markets are going up. It's not QE why markets are going up. It's not why uh, markets are going sideways, right? It's not because of QE. You can't have it all ways. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it three ways. You can't, you got to, you know, the things that these people, that, you know, they tear out little newspaper clippings and like, look, it's a V-shaped recovery. And, oh my God, it's so much better than it was in 2008. Oh, look, America, let me give you some uh, um, muscle arm uh, flexing and some fire. I'm going to put it on, on tweets and show you America is great. We're, we're, we're the best since 1776. The the bears that are wrong since 1776. <laughs> I have a six-point model. Right? Yeah, the market is going up because things are improving. We're going back to normal. We're opening up America. You've been open up since freaking May. <laughs> where, where's all the, the air travel? Where's all the hotel occupancy? Where's all the restaurants and buildings and cities? opening up and flourishing with all this economic growth instead you got uh, uh, rentals in San Francisco down 32 percent New York is you know empty you told me the market is a forward-looking indicator you should dip on the way down you should buy that's what you told me I don't see it what I see is that the United States of America is a humanitarian crisis this is what I see. That we're all maroon. Mar what, what is maroon? Maroon is uncontrollable spread. What? You didn't know that was that was coming? <laughs> that it was going to go away with warm weather? That is a liberal hoax? It's just a flu? Let's go back to airlines for a minute. Let's go back to airlines. Clearly, you can see that the stock price of an airline is dependent okay on global passenger booking and travel okay you, you can't you can't say that that's not the way it works i can convince just about anybody to look at this chart and be like well yeah that makes sense of course you know why would airline stocks go up if there's less people uh, traveling so you can see the value inside of this chart you can see the value is people right it's not the amount of money that uh, these airlines are going to receive from government that's going to increase value right it's not it's the same thing with mmt it's not the amount of money that you're going to print or qe or helicopter or do whatever it is that you're going to do with that money printing and then call yourself an economist it has nothing to do with that the stock market is not the economy right so you are telling me that the market is a forward-looking indicator based on 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 what qe helicopter money deficits repos so when i tell you that no government can print value for a currency okay it's the same thing as me telling you no airline can receive enough money to create value to create passengers for people to fly it's the same thing but for some reason people don't understand that they disregard it they pretend that they it, it doesn't click in their head it, uh, it's it's uh, it's insane. It's, it's insane to me. I don't understand why, why what's so difficult about that. You can print all the money in the world and pump it into the um, into the productive economy. You're not going to get more productivity. You're not going to get more wealth. You can't divide wealth by 
uh, you can't multiply wealth by dividing it. You can't create more people being productive. You can't create more passengers flying an aircraft just because you decided to print money. It's not stimulative. All you're going to do is print money. It's going to go through the household income to savings, and you're going to pump up asset prices. That's it. You're not going to make the economy better. You're not going to get people producing and innovating and being efficient. It's not going to happen. You can sit here and tell me demand economics you know, is better because it's not trickle-down economics. It's the same shit. You cannot create people being productive. You saw it. Helicopter money. Where is it? Where is our savings? Right? It, 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 it's not. You, you're not more productive. And if you're not going to be more productive, you're not going to create more wealth. If you don't create more wealth, you cannot value the currency that you're creating. Let's look. Let's take a look at the dollar. What's the dollar doing? Oh, wow! Surprisingly, look, dollar's falling. Wow, go figure, huh? It's. I'm not an economist. Who cares? <laughs> Call me whatever you want. I'm telling you what is what is happening economically before it does it does happen. So let me ask you this. Let, let's go back in time. For every dollar that you create, okay, you should get at least, at least one dollar of GDP, if not more, right? So don't think of debt to GDP. Think of GDP to debt. Why? Because when you create a widget and then that widget is sold to the next person, the next person, the next person, to the, to the final user, then you're going to add this up every time it's sold and that's going to reflect in gdp that's what it is right it's just a, a accounting of every single transaction every single time it happens it can be one widget that done 10 times is going to count it every single time so if you're going to create a dollar and you call it stimulus you should at least get one dollar of gdp one one and that was the case from 1968 all the way up to 81. Well, what about now? What about now? Hmm? What has happened since the 80s? The more and more money that you create, the less and less and less and less and less and less GDP that you get. So how is that? What's going on here? Something is wrong. Clearly, clearly the act of printing money does not create value, doesn't create more productivity, doesn't create more wealth. doesn't mean that there wasn't more wealth created. It just takes more and more and more and more and more dollars to create one dollar of GDP. Right? So you're going in the wrong direction. Because the more you print, the more you have to print. The more you QE, the more you have to QE. The more you repo, the more likely it is you're going to have to end up in QE. It's what happened. And people are like, oh, repos are nothing. It's just, you know, it's just a short-term thing. It's no big deal. Yeah, but why are banks not lending to each other? Why do they have to run to the Fed? There's a problem. And this is way before COVID. The more helicopter the money that you spend, the more you have to spend. And the more money that you create, the more, uh, the less... GDP growth you're going to get. And then everybody's sitting there looking at each other. It's like, man, I, we're, not, we're not getting uh, inflation. We're not, uh, what, what's going on? I, I don't understand. Well, we're willing to accept more inflation. Fed just said that last meeting. In the meeting before that. Yeah, well, we're, how are you going to get more inflation? How are you going to get more passengers to fly by printing money? You won't. It's not going to happen. All you're going to do is blow out asset prices. That's it. <laughs> you're not going to create more value. You cannot multiply wealth by dividing it. You understand? You can't create more digits, more dollars, and say, well, I'm going to multiply wealth. You know, if you work like that, we'll all sit home and we just print money and that's it. So MMT is wrong on that end. Well, Nick, are you against people getting $600 checks per week? No, we're in a pandemic. Yes, we should do it, of course. Absolutely. But that costs about $48 billion a month. 
right? For even at two hundred fifty billion six months, whatever it is, two seventy five. Where's the other four trillion? Where's the other four point one trillion? Where's all the lending facilities? You see, it's a problem. It's a problem. You see the stock market go up, and you're telling me buy the dip. You know the market is a forward-looking indicator bullshit. It's not. It's not even close. And if you want to see what the forward-looking indicator really looks like, unleash all those seven trillion, seven point two trillion dollars of bonds into the market. See what happens. See where interest rates go. See where the 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 real value of the stock market is. Then, my friend, you can tell me it's a forward-looking indicator. Okay? And you will see everything crash. Because we are in trouble. And we've been in trouble for a while. Because it's not the deficits. Forget about deficits. Deficits are not where money is created. Most money is created in banks. Okay? Banks are the ones that create the vast majority of money. If you have to get to a point where deficits have to step in, okay, because the, the money creation from banks is insufficient, and now you need deficits, that's end game shit. That's end game MMT. That's when you get into trouble, because it's so bad that the government has to step up QE, lower interest rates, Q, uh, repo, helicopter money. These things are irreversible. Anything that goes one way it's going to remain in that direction because you can't do it. You can't, you can't go backwards. We tried to unwind what happened. Stock market took a crash 20%. You don't believe me? Here it is, right in front of you, tapering, right, normalizing. We're trying to go back to that normal. Everybody was cheering, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. What happened? Stock market tanked. And this is the S&P, by the way. This is the wrong one I wanted to flip. This is the S&P. Let me take you to another chart. Here it is, top to bottom. 24% drop. What, Google was not good suddenly? Apple is not the best thing uh, since sliced bread? Amazon is not good now? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm dealing with, with, with insane people that believe this crap. They don't know any better, and I get it. I do, I do, I do. But please, don't argue with me when you don't know what you're talking about. Please. And now, suddenly, in the worst pandemic since 1929, oh, we have a 33-day collapse in the market. And now everything is good. Right? Everything is good. Yay! Amazon is so great, and Tesla. I love Tesla. Tesla is going to be added to the S&P 500. Yes, it's fantastic, right? 33, 32-day uh, recession, and off we go because the market is a forward-looking indicator. Why wasn't it a forward-looking indicator here? Why wasn't it a, a forward-looking indicator here? Huh? You see, it doesn't pass the smell test. Again, I can convince just about anybody that Passengers are related to the price of stocks. But I cannot do it for some reason when it comes to the real economy, the real value of the economy. Okay. Most of the people out there who think they're economists and they're experts and they're MMTers and they're tweeting all over the place and blah, 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 they don't have a clue. The only thing they've known for 10 years plus buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And they've been right every single time. And there has been an improvement in the economy. There has been an improvement in unemployment. There has been an imp uh, 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 improvement in many, many ways. And I'm not saying we're going to hyperinflate tomorrow. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't deficit spend. Do not try to use Trumpatism on me. Because that's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you that the real value of the economy is not what the price of the stock market is telling you. Now, you can sit here and tell me, who cares, Nick? The stock market is up. And I would say you're 100% right. I'm not, I'm not arguing against that. I want you to understand the law of diminishing returns. 
Right. You, the more you do something, the more you have to do it, and the less effective it becomes. You are headed in the wrong, we are headed in the wrong direction, in the dark, running he, uh, as fast as we can, head first off a cliff. And we don't know where that cliff is. So you're a market bull? Great. How much more can we go up? I don't know. It depends on the stimulus. If it's $3 trillion, in a $33 trillion market, you can estimate. Not that you're going to be right. You can estimate another 10% higher. Okay? Another 10% higher, and we'll, we'll even take it from the, from the top, which is right here. All right, let's go up another 10%. Where does that take the NASDAQ? About 13,800. Okay? Maybe it goes to 14. Doesn't matter. It's, it's an estimate. Okay? It's an estimate. Okay, and then what? What is going to be the earnings yield then? Is it going to be higher or lower? It's going to be lower. It's going to be lower because the economy cannot keep up with the stock price and the money printing. You understand? The productivity and the wealth of the economy cannot grow at the same rate as the stock market is going and um, the money printing, the debts. It cannot grow at that speed. So you come into me as a fifter. Fifter is someone who has a 50-50 chance of being right randomly, not because they know what the hell they're talking about. You come into me, you know, and telling me, oh, the market is going to go higher, the market is going to do this and buy the dip and this. And well, start praying for, for deficits. Today, uh, somebody told me, or yesterday, somebody told me, a friend of mine told me, he goes, well, why can't Apple go to, to, to $3 trillion? I, I said, I, I, I don't um, I don't see that happening. doesn't mean it can't happen. I just don't see it. Because to say that Apple will go to $3 trillion is to imply that it's going to go up 33%. It's at $2 trillion now, somewhere is about. Right? So you think the stock market is going to go up 33%? You think the market is going to go to 16,000? Maybe. You're going to need a lot more fucking stimulus than uh, that 2 trillion they're talking about. Remember, the stock market is worth 33 trillion. Okay. Way, way above what um, uh, what GDP is at 21 trillion. You think that the next time the stock market goes down? That Trump is going to come and Mnuchin is going to come out to save it with uh, pretty boy uh, pal. They'll come out and oh, 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 let's save the stock market. You're delusional. He's 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 on scorched earth right now. Uh, plan destroy everything in uh, in sight. You think the market starts tanking here? Trump is going to come in and save it with more deficits and more QE and more helicopter money and more agreements and stimulus and whatever. You're you're hallucinating. Good luck. You may be right. I don't think so. You know, I don't. You think when Biden gets elected, the Republicans are going to be like, oh, okay, Trump is gone. Okay, let's make a deal. Well, so how is the market going to go higher if you don't get those trillions of dollars. How, how is that going to happen? I don't know. More QE? Perhaps. What, uh, Yellen, you think Yellen, uh, who's supposed to be, I guess, the next Treasury Secretary, is going to go up to Mitch McConnell and be like, hey, Mitchie, how you doing, buddy? Hey, can we can we strike a deal? Yeah, please, because we got to, you know, take care of the people. No, you don't, Mitch doesn't give a shit about people. And I'm not political. Don't even, don't even go down that route. I'm not political. You think you think he's gonna care? Oh yeah, he's not gonna care. And what what's gonna happen <laughs> when the market starts to tank? There's there's no there's no safety net right now. And I think the market knows that. I think that if they start selling and they're man, they're in trouble. Okay, so often I've said, you know, it's not the COVID in of itself that's the problem. COVID is going to expose the problem. It's a socioeconomic impact that matters. Look at the socioeconomic impact. 
People are fighting. There's riots in the streets. They don't want to wear masks. They don't want vaccines. They're they're out sitting there looking for fake ballots. <laughs> you know, it, it, that, that's another thing, right? You're sitting here wasting your time looking for something that somebody claimed without evidence. And then you're saying, wait, 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 I'm going to go find the evidence. First I make the claim, then I'm going to find the evidence. No, that's not the way it works. First you find the evidence, then you make the claim. You don't go out and say, oh, there's a accident at 18th and Walnut. Please come. Bring helicopters. Bring a, a fire department, ambulance, everybody, come. And then everybody comes. They're like, okay, where's the accident? Wait, I'm going to go find it. But that's not even logical. And yet look at how many people believe that crap. Look what we're wasting our time with. The U.S. is on fire. Humanitarian crisis. 250,000 people dead. 500,000 excessive deaths. And we're sitting here looking for ballots that don't exist. And you think Trump, between now, inauguration, and then after that, the Republican uh, uh, Senate is going to sit here and bail out the stock market when it starts to tank? I don't see that happening. I'm sorry. So if they start selling this off, you can find yourself all the way down here before you can blink. So that's the decision that you have to make. If you believe the market could go up 33% and Apple can be a $3 trillion company, along with Amazon and Microsoft, and you believe that you're going to get that stimulus that's going to make that happen, versus Trump coming out and saving the stock market if it starts to sell off. And you think that's a good risk-reward going long? Have at it. Have at it. You think the economy is going to grow at the same rate as the money printing in the stock market? Good luck to you, my friend. It's all up to you, right? It's your money, not mine, right? You think it's going to increase in size? Good luck to you. I'm just telling you, I don't think that's possible. What do I know? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe they'll come up with more lending facilities. Maybe we'll make up some new... Some new letters for the alphabet, so we can come up with more lending facilities. Maybe the dollar will start to rise. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, uh, I'm sorry it's a 40-minute video, but um, this is not a meme. This is not an oversimplification of, you know, well, you know, Marcus forward-looking indicator. There you go. I wash my hands of any fucking <laughs> responsibility as to how I manage my money. I'm going to go out and buy stocks. Yeah, it's bullish. It's a breakout. Look at this structure. Yep. Yeah, the fifth is all. They're all. Let's go back to the video and continue this, please. And clearly that's not the case. Uh, things are not getting better. Have they improved somewhat? Sure, of course they have. But we're nowhere near where we're supposed to be in terms of normalcy. And that's what the whole thing was about, right? Oh, we're going back to normal. Oh, we're going back to normal. We're opening up. We're opening up back in June. Uh, things are going to be normal. Well, they're not. Not even close. And if you look at the TSA numbers in terms of traffic, uh, we are still down uh, to 700,000 versus 2.2, 2.3 million. Has anything changed since June? Has it? No. No. We are in the third week. The third week of November. And you know what the initial claims of unemployment insurance is? They ticked up for the, uh, November 14th. 7.42. He ticked up. And we're not even counting uh, the people on pandemic unemployment insurance or the pool or whatever it's called. And the long-term unemployment. We're not even counting these things. And you're telling me the market is a forward-looking indicator since April, March. You're showing me silly little charts. Like, look at all this. Look, it's a V. It's a V-shaped recovery. Look. Look how fast we came down. Look how fast. From, from April to May, look how wonderful it looks. It's a V. It's the fastest recovery, even better than the great financial crisis. And you're showing me stupid little, you know, newspaper clippings from Asia. That's how you read a chart? 
How about every single recession prior to that? Where are we relative to that? Right? Still above it. <laughs> still above it. Still above it. Still above everything. That's a V-shaped recovery. Look how fast it is. Oh, it's amazing. What world, what planet are you on? This is a V-shaped recovery. We're way above where we were in the great financial, the great financial crisis, which was a joke relative to what we're going through now. And you're telling me we have 33, 32-day uh, market uh, recession, and you think you think that's normal? You think you're gonna, we're going to go up another 30 percent? That the economy is going to grow that fast? That uh, we'll be able to keep up with money printing and uh, asset price inflation? That earnings are suddenly going to just, do, you know, magically spike out of nowhere with 25 million people unemployed. Yeah, okay. Well, I got a bridge to sell you, if you believe that. All right. I got a bridge to sell you. Seriously, I do. Anyway, so that's pretty much... Uh, the analysis, uh, again, you know, how many people were sitting here telling me, right, it's a breakout. Look at the breakout. And I'm like, no, don't do it. Chill. Relax. You know, if, if it is a true breakout, things, are, they're going to show themselves. No, but you don't understand it broke out. This is a break. It's a wedge and it broke out. Well, why isn't it breaking out now? You're the big expert. Fuck, tell, explain it to me. No, no, it's broken out. Okay. Good luck to you. Anyway. You know, you try to help people and they sit here and they, they bust your balls. Uh, honestly. There's times that I'm just like, you know what, fuck this. I'm not even going to do it anymore. I'll do it for myself and <laughs> that's it. it. It gets that frustrating. You know, people, you try to help them and they, they don't get it. Whatever. All right, guys. You take care of yourselves. Uh, don't forget, come down to patreon.com slash real macro. Come, join, subscribe. You can see all the videos. Uh, I'm doing a lot of live videos, so you, you're welcome to come. End of day. Uh, patreon.com slash real macro. Patreon.com slash real macro. Come on down and subscribe. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.